Okay, everyone, so this video is regarding the interior illumination kit from Toyota that's specified for the GI Yaris. Um, I installed it on the weekend, on Saturday, today's Monday. I've had a couple of days to think about lessons learned because the installation wasn't straightforward. There's a few changes um, in the wiring harness with the Australian models, I'm assuming. Basically, I just wanted to go over and cl re clarify a few things up front um, in order for you to be aware before you begin this journey. Basically, um, I want to show you a few things here in the booklet. Okay, so the main point I'd like to make is this connector here where you take power. From a particular wire which they call plus b um, it's supposed to be a brown wire basically you can't do that on the australian versions there is no connector up there um, so what i ended up doing is extending this wire here bringing it down feeding it down here and connecting to a plug that controls the passenger side um, led on the door handle so, the issue is, what they would like you to do is find a connector up here that's supposed to be 13 pin, and we're supposed to tap off here. So the translation of this character is brown. So I was looking for a brown wire. Now there are several brown wires up here. There is a harness that comes through, um, but it's all wrapped up, it's all sealed. And then there's quite a few cables. There's a, a couple of bundles that go up over the um, reinforcement bar up here. And they terminate on a plate, which I found to be a grounding plate. So basically it's like a dead end and it's connected to the, to the bare metal. Of the car chassis so all of the brown wires that i traced up there were all grounds so they're definitely not a positive um, so even if i tapped into one of them this this system wouldn't have worked um, so basically what i've done is i've looked online and as you'll see in the kit you get two of these led modules one goes here on the driver's side and plugs in, and the other one plugs in on the passenger footwell into here. Now what I noticed straight away is there's um, connectors here, or there's little slots where you can click in another LED module, both on the passenger side and the driver's side has a spare one. So in my wisdom, I found the part number for the LED modules online and I've ordered two more, but they're going to take a few weeks to arrive. What I want to do is on mine, I want to add in the extra two, just so that the lighting is more uniform at, um, on the on the footwells, basically. Um, it shouldn't adversely affect the signal and the, the power consumption, because they're very low power consuming LEDs. But I want to test it first before I confirm or deny anything um, the little LED module itself is $15 I've guessed what this connector is and I've ordered a couple of those at $5 each so I'm gonna try and make it um, look as OEM as possible basically however in light of the, all the changes that are required to the wiring diagram I'm considering making kits just for our models basically that will wire from this side here and here and have um will make allowance for two leds on either side um the kit from toyota was around 200 dollars shipped with fees and everything um but for what it is it's severely overpriced basically but this booklet was basically worth it for me because it helped me 
the side, you know, work out how to take all the panels apart. Okay, so I'll leave it here for now. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. I know it's long, it's a bit monotonous, and I apologize in advance for a lot of shots with my sweaty arm and sweaty leg in the way. Um, most of it was done one-handed with my free hand holding the phone. Um, so the quality is not great. I didn't expect it to be so complicated and take so long, but I'll, um, I'll see how the edit goes. I'm a beginner at editing, so we'll, we'll see how, how nice I can make it. Um, look out for an update video in the future. In a few weeks, I'm getting the spare LEDs, so I'm going to be investigating what it would take to, to produce my own version of this wiring harness with all the OEM bits um, and with proper instructions in English. Good luck. So today I'm going to try and install the interior lighting kit for the GI Yaris. It's a kit you can buy from Toyota in Japan. It costs, costs a couple of hundred bucks. And it basically adds LED illumination under the driver's and passenger's uh, footwell. What I didn't realize though, when I bought it, is the extent of how much trim you have to remove to install the wiring. Essentially, we're gonna be taking apart the whole front dash. However, there's decent instructions. So let's go one at a time. So this is the kit. The part number is there. You get some cable ties, a clip, some foam. These are the actual LED modules. So they click in to pre-existing mounts in the trim. This is a switch. You have to drill a hole and install this under the steering wheel somewhere there, near your knees. It's a little wire. And this is the main wiring harness. Now the instructions are pretty intense. What I might do is just quickly explain it first and then we'll go through detail by detail. So essentially I've laid out this harness, how it will be installed. Um, since we're in Australia, this is a right-hand drive car. So this is the driver's side. This white connector will go into the driver's side LED. This connector then comes to the switch and they're all color coded. Um, then this will be like where the center console is, just to the left of it. You've got your fuse, and this is where you will tap into the red. This connector here will come down to the under the glove box to the passenger side footwell. And then this is the the black control ground wire basically. So that's gonna come off a connector somewhere up behind the glove box um, and that'll be controlled so that as the car dims the lighting dims it should dim these um, what this little wire is for is that you actually tap off from an existing connector so this will get inserted into a particular pin and then we're gonna short this onto this wire this will get shorted onto a wire that's pre-existing Um, basically I've prepared the car by just opening the doors, centering it in the garage, giving me space. Um, I'm going to work slowly and methodically just to make sure I don't lose track of bolts and clips and, um, screws. I've got some tools prepared here. Just a set of sockets, drill bits. Um, I've got these step drill bits as well, which we will use. Because I need to drill a 20 mil hole. And just screwdrivers basically, large and small. All right, so we'll go through the book quickly. 
and I've used, um, I spent about an hour yesterday using the Google Translate app on my phone to do a live camera translation of a lot of the information in here. These are just some warnings. You gotta love the Japanese cartoons. Um, this just explains how to install these um, wire jumpers. Basically, they're not ideal, but they'll do the job. This is a little depiction of where that wiring will go. So, as I said, connector up there, LED here, power off the middle, switch here, LED there. But unfortunately, we have to take out most of the trim in the center section. So you start by doing the both right and left hand side um, little side panels from the top part of the dash. Now the, um, if I remember which way around it was, the squares are where you put force and lever. The circles are where the clips are. The shaded area is where they recommend you put masking tape just to not damage the surrounding trim. I've got some trim removal tools here, so I'm hoping to not do anything dramatic as mark the trim. Um, I'm not going to be using screwdrivers or anything metal like that. Next step will be to remove the, the door sill bits of trim. So one good thing with this book is it shows you exactly where all the clips are, which so far everyone's just been guessing, I think, from videos I've seen online. There's a little plastic resin nut you have to remove on this one and then just one clip up here. Then it moves to this under panel and there's screws here. And it mentions here when you translate it, how many screws, how many bolts. That's just a few clips. You should just leave her off here and that should pop off. The glove box, it's a little bit tricky, but probably similar to my Lexus so you squeeze the two sides in it should pop out and you just pull it out to unclip and you squeeze this little retainer in there so you can slide the glove box out and it should just fall out it's a little clip in the center it should easily come off this is the piece I'm worried about it's the entire center section above the head unit um, We'll just take it easy when we get to there. There's the other side uh, end cap. This is the in Australia where the heated seats and the USB port buttons are. Um, seems fairly straightforward. Now this is the RS model in Japan automatic so we ignore that this is the one we will have to undo so i've already played with the gear knob in mind so i know how all that comes out but what i haven't done is taken off this entire trim piece but i've seen someone on youtube do it before so i'm confident in that so here you'll see there's some screws with a, with a pointy end and there's some bolts with a flat end so you'll see this four screws and two bolts, basically. There's this section here, just the bolt here, the rest should pop off. And it explains the wiring. It shows you where to find the panel. Now this is important. So, I didn't translate this fully yesterday. I'm gonna re really look at it today. But basically, if there is a wire coming out of this, I think it's port tw pin 22. It shows you here which one it should be. Um, you use it, otherwise if it's empty, you insert this one into onto the pin, and then we'll crimp onto the wire here. Um, so it's pretty standard. Looks like we might need a little flathead screwdriver to release the clip on the connector. 
Um, the black arrows show where you should cable tie. And the dark highlighted wire is the, the harness that we're installing. There's another view. So it looks like they, they give you all the hardware you need, which is well thought out. It's a decent kit and it's a genuine turd item. This is another one explaining the bend and the angles, I guess, or where and how you install it. This one here, I think it's pin five. It's a 13 pin connector, this one. Nine with four large ones, so that top right one should be the red. I don't know if it's um always on or it's an ignition triggered one. I assume it's um always on because when you open the doors, you don't have ignition enabled. The fuse, it's a funny fuse actually, it's an AC rated fuse. It's not a technical, like correctly spec DC fuse, but anyway. Um, this I'll have to translate again, but it talks about how you bend the cable and where you secure it with the cable tie. A couple more cable ties here. And just follows basically back along the inside of the dash. So it's quite extensive. Here's another one. Um, this is the driver's footwell. Um, so once you do cable tie in here somewhere, potentially to that bit of um, wiring loom that's coming out, um, it wants you to double up on some of the cable ties. So obviously one of these might be a bit thicker. One cable tie won't reach. Now here, it shows you where to install the um, little LED module. Make sure it's facing the right way up and oriented correctly. This is the other one. Um, so just click the wiring into it, basically. Now once you mark on this panel here, this is the panel near your knees under the steering wheel. So I want you to go in this little quadrant here, 14 mil in, 15 mil up, mark it with a pin and then drill it out. Start with the three mil drill bit, end up with the 20. So that's where my step drill will come in handy. It'll shoot through the plastic in no time at all. So you insert that, make sure it's the right way up. You secure it with that double-sided tape uh, clip and plug it in. And this just mentions the operation of it. There's some troubleshooting, talks about if, is it plugged in? Yes, no, if not, is the switch on? Otherwise it tells you to check all your wiring again. Here's a basic wiring diagram. So, pin 22, pin 5, there's the fuse going to the switch, switch is on, it closes that circuit, comes to pin um, 2 on this LED, 2 on this LED, and then the ground that's switched comes in and goes to pin 1 on both. So these are the different connectors and that we have. These are the two vehicle connectors. So there's um, pin five and wherever 22 is. So that's it. This is the operational spec of the LED kit. 8.4 milliamps, standard voltages. And that's it. This is a little supplementary book with some troubleshooting, basically the same thing. So that's the guide. I'll stop it here and then we'll continue. All right, so the glare is quite bad, but anyway, I'm gonna start with this passenger side trim. I don't wanna start with the driver's one because if I mess it up, I'll see it every time I enter the car. It's gonna annoy me. Looking at the diagram, we've got a, a point here that we need to Pull on, 
and there's three clips at the bottom, three up the top. It's gonna to be hard to get into these ones. But we'll see, I've got a few different tools here. Maybe the hook would get in there. This is a really handy one I got with my Blackview dash cam. Um, fits in places, others sometimes don't. So, let's try. I need two hands for some of these steps, we'll see. Well, I'll put the phone down and get back to it. Okay, so it's easier than I thought. You wedge on here, you get this clip out first, then the others. The back three just slide out basically, so you just pull on it on an angle. Step one done. I'll do the driver's side. Well, let's try this one one handed. It's not so straightforward with one hand, but anyway, I want to film it for everyone's benefit. Now what I might do is do the glove box, starting with the bottom and the cover. I'll just change my mind, I'll go in the order that they've specified, just because Pretty sure we probably need to take some of this bottom trim out before we can take the glove box out. So we'll do this first. Straightforward, this one. Okay. So some clips on the side and on the top, these middle ones just lift up. Put them down there. And we'll do the driver's side. Yesterday I installed the 
advanced floor mat set. What's next? Uh, this part with the resin nut, and then we pull from here. And there's a clip up there. Let's have a look at the passenger side first. Okay, so the nut can't see, it's too dark. Basically, just take it out just by untwisting it. Can use screwdrivers as well. So now we're going to pull from the bottom. Then you pull it forward. There we go. Now it should just come forward. Alright, so I see what what they're going on about. So the squares are like clips like this. And the um, circles are actual clips that mount in. So either push in like that round ones, or those top. Now we know. Driver's side. Not out. Bottom clip, upper clip, and it's out. So trying to twist too much, these clips won't last because they're just plastic. Um, and if you're taking this in and out many times, it'll loosen over time. You might be able to find some from auto shops. I bought different types. I got rid of the other ones. I basically, can get genuine ones. I always recommend that. Or the decent brand ones. Don't just buy them off eBay or Alibaba. There's quite a bit going on in here. Alright, let's have a look at the next step. Alright, so this is the panel just above the pedals so this one's actually got two screws one there one there so I'm gonna have to lie on the ground for this I'm gonna set up a towel square triangle triangle all right I got my little stubby screwdriver let's see here's the first one Just be gentle, but apply decent force. You don't want to strip it. This is just one that goes into plastic. Now, so we don't lose all of these, I'm going to keep them in a little storage container. The little resin nuts I've just chucked in here in the center console for now. Should have been a bit more prepared, actually. Okay, I can feel it. 
it's in here. Let me get the light on. That's better. Trim remove tool will help here. Let's try this. There we go. And again. It's Mr. OBD. If I can get something in there, Let's see how we go one handed. Great success. Playing piece. However, this is actually where the LED will get mounted. So I believe it goes just in here. We'll get to that later. All right. So before we continue, I thought this might be a good little segue to show you just how I translate Japanese into English. In case you need to do it so basically what I have if you see here I'm doing a bit of phoneception here with my wife's phone it's the Google Translate app so you set it to Japanese to English and then you can click on the camera and then what it will do is as you hold it over text translates so sometimes you have to adjust the angle and positioning but it's a lifesaver and it helped us a lot when we were traveling through around Japan so it's not like a perfect translation but it's good enough That's how I knew that's masking tape. There's clip position, guide positions. So yeah, it's a nice little thing to, to know. Oh, and by the way, I got myself a little container just to store all the bits from each step. And then we'll empty it in the reverse order and we shouldn't have anything left over at the end. Otherwise, we start again. Okay, I'm ready to continue. It's been a couple of hours and lucky me, I've got twin babies downstairs, two weeks old, so they need a lot of my attention. Um, that's why this is gonna take me probably all day. So I'm constantly starting and stopping and then I have to catch up to where I was up to. Basically, the next step is the passenger side panel under the glove box and then the glove box itself. So there's no screws on any of these, so we should be good. 
what I'll do is I'll turn the light on. Okay. So this should just pop out. So there's little clips. You can either push that in with your finger and pull it down, or you can insert that trim piece, trim removal tool, sorry, and use that. There we go. So see. usually easier. And this is where the LED will be mounted on the passenger side. Finally, it's got, looks like two areas where it can mount on both the driver's and passenger side. So I'm not sure about that. It would be nice to have twice as many LEDs. But then again, I don't want it too bright. It's distracting. So the glove box. I'm confident that it's similar to our Lexus NX, which is just there. Beautiful car as well. Push this in, push this in, not like that, I'll tell you not like that, anyway, you have to squeeze this little clip and then push it out. So once you release this, love box can then drop. Once we get this unlatched. There we go. All right, so it's still on a hinge, but that just pops off. I'm gonna try to do it carefully. This is how you get access to the pollen filter as well. It's just behind here. Yeah, we'll leave that for now. A lot of wiring. Now, one of these, I believe, is what we will use. But we'll leave that for now. Let's continue. All right, this little piece is next, which is this guy right here. I'm going to use a trusty trim removal tool. Straight into the seat. So there we go. That's what's behind there. Now the next step is the difficult one. It's the entire center dash bit. We'll start a new video for that, I think. All right, sorry for the poor lighting. I'm not sure how it'll turn out. This whole thing's being filmed on an iPhone 10R. This center dash part, I might have to use two hands because it's a significant piece. I'm not entirely sure what's gonna happen when I get to the push button start, whether it's gonna stay in, or come out, there'll be a wire attached to it. Um, the diagram here shows how many different clips and things there are. So, wish me luck, I guess. All right, so I've worked out that I can start taking these clips off. And 
I may need to come back. This is probably going to assist. Yeah, so one of these trim removal tools are probably necessary for this task. All right, an update. I grabbed this like this, I pulled it out. That seems to have done it. Okay. Now we've got to see what's behind here. And disconnect this connector. So you just squeeze from the sides, pull out. All right, wasn't too bad. So far, nothing's broken. As you can see, there's quite a lot, quite a lot of clips. It's a nice beefy push button. Several pins as well. Nice detent feeling. All right, there's our stash of parts for now. All right, next step. All right, next part we've already done, which is the end cap here on the passenger side. Now uh, it wants us to remove this bit here so I think I may need a tool there's not much space in here at all. lever it basically lever it up there lever it up there and it will come out let's disconnect these making sure we remember what goes where so some people have been considering re Repositioning where the USB comes out of. It's very hard one handed. So I've just got a little USB stick in there, 32 gig. I have my flack audio files and it just plays them. Usually I have the screen off. Just use the steering wheel controls. Um, this part here is where you're supposed to store your phone and things. Usually it's, it's like a hard plastic cover, so it's slippery. Phone won't stay. Basically I just put a little non-slip mat in. I bought from Dezo, three bucks. People have been looking at seeing if they can put a wireless charging kit under this panel here 
but I won't be able to find that today because even though I can get the front bit lifted out, it's held in behind the vents. So I assume you'd have to take the screen out, the vents out, and then this piece will come out. And that's a couple of steps too far that I'm willing to take today because we're already quite far into it. Um, yeah, like it's tight, there's not much space, it's a compact car. It'd be nice to, to have wireless charging, but really, you know, I don't take it on long drives. I just charge at my destination or at home. All right, that part is out. Oh yes, this is the next part. You know, you just untwist. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's a nicely weighted one as well. Although I do plan to change that with something very special. Um, this clip. You just have to spread it. Two hands would help. Three hands would help actually. You can use one to hold the phone. Oh, I give up. All right, so that comes out. Make sure you don't lose a spring. Springs are easy to lose. Um, we'll store this. Next. Um, that's it. This is part of that. This also has a lot of clips. Um, especially in that back corner, if you have a look. Heaps of clips. So we might just that somewhere and work our way work our way around no I'm gonna do it without the phone for a minute let me see how I go. All right, we'll try a tactic from this side. So once we pop a couple of these clips up, side that's it so pulling this uh, direction back towards you now and this guy just grip it here maybe not there we go yeah it was all right good this loose the rest is loose there's a couple of connectors there it's this one Tricky. Now 
was grease on the shifter, which I managed to get on my hand. So the wiring also needs to come out. All right, so to get this clip out with the wiring, you squeeze these two ends from the top side. You poke it out. Let's see. Take this whole piece. Leave it there. Now this guy's ready to be hot wired. There we go. You get full access to everything. Now, the next step is they actually want you to remove this bit as well. So, for that, we are going to need a large Phillips screwdriver because there's a few bolts I can see. All right, so this piece here is actually not what's in the diagram. I believe the one in the diagram is probably for the RS model, the automatic. So since this gives me pretty much access to this entire area in here, I'm just going to leave it. I'm sure I can work around it. We need to move over to this panel now. Remove this whole piece. So this has one screw in the bottom right corner and the rest should just pull off. Let's go to the other side. All right, so one bolt, there it is. length as well the rest is just clips so oh so it's caught on the rubber yeah just gonna bring it out in front. Well, it's a bigger piece than I thought. Mm. Again, a few connectors to take out. Now most of these are keyed a certain orientation. So you don't need to remember this way because I'll only fit one particular way around. Um, now this guy. to remember how to do this from previous Toyotas. Pretty sure I need to push that in. Um, I'm going to use two hands for this, I think. Alright, the way you get this out is pull on that that little clip in there, you use the trim removal tool, push it back this way. That bends this part down and then allows you to slide it out. Once you slide it out, this whole piece is loose. Uh -oh. 
So, car looks like it's destroyed, but we're gonna do this nicely and then put it back together. You definitely have to allow a few hours for this. You have to be pretty motivated. Not everyone will be. Um, Alright, the wiring's the next step, so we'll end this here and we'll continue. Okay, so at the passenger side there is this 43 pin plug. Now, my car has a black wire coming out of this pin here which is one of the thin ones, the six one along on the right side, just to the left of these larger pins. So if you've got a car, assume it's the automatic RS model, it doesn't have a black wire coming out of there. That's why they give you this wire. So you can plug it in yourself and then short to it. Now, since I've got a wire there, I won't need that part. All I need to do get this sorry this in there sit the black wire in between these crimps here and then when we close this over it will push the wire down through those blades and it'll break through the outer sheath and make contact with the inner cores so it'll basically short that wire to this one so these are like tap off connectors once you close this it'll click use pliers to squeeze it and then once it's clicked that's it you leave it so there's no solder required it's not messy um, they're not great but they, they used a lot and I've used them in the past in cars and I've had zero failures, so I assume Toyota's given quality ones, so we'll just trust them. Um, there's instructions here on how to do it, but basically I'll go ahead and do that and then show the recording because it's something I don't want to do one-handed. Um, I'll just show you where the connector is though. So it's this large one here. It's that black wire just in there. The six one down. Yellow at the top, then nothing, then a blue, then two blanks, and then the black. So I'll find a nice spot here where I can tap off it. And we'll go from there. All right, so the first step is to feed this. If you can see, it's not great. Um, basically, I fed it from under here. Cheers. Just in this gap here. between the trim and the existing wiring harnesses. Then we will tap off that connector just in the background there. Just here. Then we will cable tie to the existing mounting point where the other harness is. And then this wire will swing under here. And this first one comes out here to where the light is. All right. So I've lined up that black wire. Basically in the tap. And now what you have to do is you have to fold the other side across. All right, so I've squeezed it with the pliers like this. 
basically now it's clipped over itself this this connection is done so now this blue type of connector can't can't slide it's fixed now i'm going to put a couple of cable ties just to secure it and we'll continue running this wiring all right so there's the tap of the black wire cable tied it there some slack in the wire cable tied it here now we can run it along under here okay it's update time we have a problem um where this wiring comes up near the pollen filter here they mention undoing some electrical tape to expose a connector a 13 pin connector and then it should go to a brown wire and um, basically this connector is missing um, yeah so you see there's lots of brown wires there, a lot of thick ones, a few thin ones. I'm assuming we're tapping into a thinner one because we don't need much current and this little wire tap doesn't suit a large gauge wire. But basically I can feel under there that there definitely is no connector in there. This is just a whole bunch of cables taped up. It goes all the way to the other side. So potentially they have Maybe these Australian models different. Maybe they've changed the design since they had to release this kit. Who knows? Um, there's connectors back there, but none of them look like the 13 pin one that's in the instruction book. So what I'm gonna do now is beep out a few of these browns, see if we can find um, which one's a, a constant 12 that we can use. And to test whether the whole thing works, I've put in one LED module here. And I'll look at basically the doors. So I'll see that we have to get it running basically whenever the doors turn on. And then whenever this light turns off, this one should also. So things just got harder. All right, so it's been like an hour or two. I finally worked out what I'm going to do. Um, basically, I was testing with the LED that's located here. I'm trying to find the relevant wires. I made a couple of rookie mistakes, like forgetting to have this connected, therefore this was open circuit. Um, got my colors wrong on one one test, red and black. Basically this connector here goes to the light switch on the door. The solid black wire, the thin one, is the positive and the black with the silver dots is the negative. So anyway, we can still use this as the negative, so that's, that's fine, but this wire here that's supposed to go up and connect up here, I need it to come back down and I'm gonna tap off the positive here. So what I'm gonna do is take this small section. So I'm gonna use that tap here, but I'm gonna solder half a meter of wire to this to extend it back and then we can continue. All right, so I've cut this one. I'm gonna add 50 centimeters of wire between that, and that should be enough. Um, use heat shrink, do it properly, and do a nice solder to it. That's it, doesn't need much solder. If you twist them, uh, I'll explain on the next joint, 
basically twist them in opposite directions so they form quite a mechanical bottom first and then the solar just helps it all stay together. So it's the first layer of clear heat shrink and I'm just going to do a second layer of red. There we go, one is done. Alright, so basically you have both ends stripped cross them over and then you twist them in opposite directions so it's quite strong then you add solder and then it's super strong alright there's the solder and then make sure you don't forget to have a heat shrink ready before you do that solder connection We're done. It's extended by half a meter. All right, back in the car. I've attached this side of the fuse, which I extended. So I'm gonna run this wire basically back along down into this black connector here. And the wire I'm going to tap into is this this thin black one so it's not that top left black it's the next one down it's got the silver dot here so i'm just gonna expose as much as i can tap it off cable tie it all neatly so this foam thing it's to wrap around the fuse I'm going to wrap the fuse now in this. That just stops it vibrating and rattling around. All right. So I've tapped off that wire. I'm going to cable tie in a couple of places. It's a little bit of slack. Probably 45 centimeters would have been enough. But it's fine. I'll plug all this in. And this LED should turn on. All right, so it's working. You can see the glow. Tapped off here, cable tied, this red wire. The slack, I just shorted. Sorry, cable tied in a little loop. Um, now I need to secure this. And potentially start putting some of this trim back on. Here's the excess. This needs to go to the other side of the car now. I'm considering not drilling the panel. I might just leave this in the on position and I'll just cable tie it at the back and hide it because I kind of I want these to always be on whenever the doors are open. Wherever these are on, I want the footwells to be on. That's basically it. All right, so I've fit this panel back in. There's the LED, you can see the glow. Cable tied up here. There's the fuse tucked in nicely. Cable tied there. Now the rest of this wiring, I need to feed. Let's progress. All right, so run the wires through the center part, cable tied there, cable tied there. Now they're hanging here. All right, so now these basically 
should go over the aircon duct work. They get double cable tied to the ducting. This then connects down to the LED. And then this switch ends up somewhere here. I think I might drill the panel out and install it. Um, it's out of the way. It's not like it's going to be too noticeable. Alright, it's a quite tight fit, but anyway. So a cable tied to there, to that metal bracket. Um, I just got a longer cable tie basically from my own stock, attached it there. Just need to make sure that it reaches. So this wire here needs to reach here. When you test fit it, you can see that it's close. Um, we should be good. All right, so I've changed my mind again. I'm just gonna cable tie this up here, leave it switched on. I'm gonna put the leftover foam tape around this blue connector and one around this black switch, just so that they don't vibrate against this white ducting and drive me crazy. So I'll do that now. I'll make sure the switch is on And then we'll be good to start putting all the panels back. All right, so they're wrapped up. Now I just need to cable tie them. All right, so this is how it's ended up. I cable tied the switch up here. This is loose. You can see the switch just in there. That gives me easy access in the future, actually. I could probably stick my hand around the back. Turn it on and off as I need to. Let's start with this bottom panel, I guess. Okay, so you can see it's on, it's working. So now basically, we need to work backwards. So the last panel we took off was this one here. On the driver's side, so I'm going to start by putting that one on. There it is. Now I considered installing the switch here, but it just doesn't fit. It's the wrong shape. It doesn't matter. Now to put these on properly, I might need both hands free. So, I'll just film it in sections, I guess. All right, so I've plugged the three connectors in. Now we're gonna do the, the bonnet release latch. So, I didn't get to show you how I took it out before. So let's see if we can uh, so hold this. Right. It's the opposite of how I took it up. Put that in there. All right, bonnet latches in, three connectors are plugged in, and this panel's done. Just need to click it in, and there's one bolt in the corner.
and try it. One of latch is working. Everything seems to be clicked in. I think this one is done. Now is the center console part with the shifter um, I should probably connect this cable in there first so just like so these in now I've got some grease on me I'm just gonna wipe my hands before we continue all right I'm gonna spin this around gently Basically, you need to line up the shifter mechanism in there. Now, it should just push in now. Got several clips. So I'm going to use two hands now just to make sure they're all clicked in. Okay, so it was in, it's fine. Now we need to put the spring in. And the retaining clip. So this again might need two hands. Because you need to hold the spring down, put the clip in. Okay. Make sure the spring sits in the groove. Should feel nice and solid. Now, let's screw this guy on. Up. Now this piece in here. So we need to connect the cables first. The center one is the USB. And now these ones.
Okay. And throw her in. Let's push this in. Click and click. This one's done. Next is the large dash and push button start piece. Let's get this cable connection done. So basically if you're doing this with two hands, you'll be much more elegant. Everything's just twice as hard with one hand here. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna start pushing bits in and clicking them in. Sounds good. I'm surprised how well everything just has come back in. The tolerances are great. Like there's no play at all. No squeaks, no rattles. Make sure you push in here. Let's get this little guy. Make sure I've carefully stirred away here. Now, we still have all of that to do. We we'll still have the passenger side and glove box and everything. Let's see what is next. Glove box. Alright, so this again will be tricky one handed. Let's see how we go. But basically, first you need to make sure the hinges are clicked in correctly. So they just sit on top. Now we've got to get this guy back on. Now these end pieces, just bending the plastic, pushing this in and pushing up at the same time. I'm trying to do both sides at the same time. All right, now it wants to do the passenger um, panel that's underneath, which I've already done. So we'll just make sure that everything is clicked in where it should be. Some light. So it is looking good. Everything's in correctly. Could probably close all this side up now. to the passenger side so that's all done make sure we get a little resin nut okay. 
now. You see there's like a bolt sticking out there. You need to make sure it pokes through this hole. part in. That's that. And we'll get the nut. And you just push it on. Give it a couple of turns. Well, that's it. As long as this is tight, you're good. piece in It's the one. And again, the opposite of how we took it off. So slide everything in. And then just click. Click everything in. sitting flush so something is not right we'll take it back off just to double check ah we need to take off this dash part again we should have put the side on first we need this So the problem was, we should have put this side on before we put this part on. Which is exactly how I had it in here. Basically we should have taken that off first, then that. And the reverse to put back on. Now, this is the important piece. Had a couple of screws. We need to make sure we put the LED in. And it also had the OBD connector. So make sure we don't forget that. Now. Plug these things in first. Mr. LED. Mr. LED. Good. Let's get the screws in.
Now, I know this video has been long, recorded pretty dodgy. It's literally my first run through. And I'm no good at YouTubing, I'm a rookie, so you take what you're gonna get. I think that's it. I don't think we need to click anything in at the back. What I want to test now is the lights. So we'll trigger them. LED on there. You can see the glow on the accelerator. Basically, after this, I'll close the garage, turn the lights off, and we'll check it out in the dark. All right. This driver's side piece now with the resin nut. Down to the last three bits of trim. Again. It's the light. Make sure it's pretty tight. That's it. The door sill. It. Was it worth it? Hell yeah. Nah, it's up to you. It's something that it's a nice to hug. Just do it once and then you're done. I'm gonna be keeping this car a long time. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time. Rating it. I'm only just getting started really. Oh yeah, we're done. We are done. I'll double check. Make sure there's no leftover bits. Good. Wasn't exactly to plan. It wasn't bad either. Um, let's close the garage and see what it's like. It's hard to see, but there is a nice glow. In there. And again, camera's not capturing it. Maybe I'll close myself in. Let's have a look. When you put your feet there, you can definitely see it. There's the door. It's the same brightness as the door handles, basically. Let me try with the light on. All right, I'm gonna open the doors. Turns on. Yeah, the torch from the phone hides the effect. But basically, they dim nicely. 
when the door handles dim. Just like that. Beautiful. Oh, what a day. It's basically the whole day. I'll do another one with the passenger side without the light. Let's have a look. This is the door and my shoe. It'll fade now. Nice. It's worth it. It's a muck around, but hey, now you've got my YouTube video to follow. Shouldn't take you all day, and you'll have two hands to do it. It's worth it, it matches nicely. It's exactly the same shade. It just sets it off. Like you can imagine approaching at night in the car park. It'll, um, it's just cool. Should have been installed from factory, to be honest. Don't know why they didn't. Anyway, mine's got it now. I thought I'd just do one last video to finish this off. It was um, quite a bit of effort, especially when we hit a snag. Um, hopefully this shows you what's involved and hopefully you can not make the mistakes I had to make. It's pretty straightforward, but you do need to solder that extension cable. There may be a wire back there that it actually works with, but for me it was a safe bet just going off another LED, basically the one on the passenger side door. Um, as you can see, it all works. So just go for it. The kit cost me just over $200 Australian shipped with Express from Japan. I bought it through uh, Green Line Motorsports. And yeah, see how you go. I'll put some photos at night on Instagram. Good luck with it.